do that. Okay. Um, I guess uh, welcome to this. Is the is this the fifth, fourth, fifth, fifth uh, um, live workshop that I've been doing? Uh, this one is introduction uh, to the sprint review. Uh, so we're going to dive a little bit into how the sprint review works. Um, maybe why it's not working for us, because in some cases I'm sure it's 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 not working, um, and how to do it uh, a little bit better. Um, hopefully, um, this will be a good interactive experience, and I'm going to try my best um, to do better at the timing. Because last week's, uh, not last week's, two weeks ago, the um, Kanban session, um, that was the main feedback was Martin's timing suck. So. Um, I'm gonna gonna try and do better at that. Peter is a veteran of some of my 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 sessions, so he knows that my timing quite often sucks. So um, that's just the way it is sometimes. When when you the participants have lots of awesome information to impart, sometimes it's more interesting to listen to what people have to say. Uh, so we have eight people uh, in person just now. Um, I'm sure a few people will turn up um, as we go, um, but I have, uh, as usual, a little icebreaker for us with some questions about the, um, let me just unlock them for you, unlock, um, with some questions about the sprint review. And I'd like you to drag, have a read of the, the different questions. Um, and drag either a tick or a cross uh, onto um, onto the hexagon on whether you agree with that statement or not. I did these ones a while ago, so I, I don't actually remember how many trues and how many falsies I've got. So we'll need to we'll need to take a look. It's been here. Oh. Is anybody got things dropping behind? No, nope. awesome. Just making sure because that's sometimes a, a mural mural problem, a tool problem. Uh, one purpose is for you. I'll, I'll put another four minutes on the timer for us to, to go through this. And then at the end of um, this exercise, I'm going to lock the meeting. Um, we had lots of disruption in the first session with people kind of hopping in and out of the meeting during the session. So um, we lock it. It does mean if you do drop out accidentally um, because of Internet or whatever, you'll not be able to get back in. And I apologize for that. Um, if you're uh, uh, if you're still waiting to participate, you can uh, click the links and get into the uh, uh, meeting before it closes. It interferes with my ability to create breakout rooms when people are joining and leaving and joining and leaving. And then Ove ends up in a breakout room on his own when it's supposed to be a pair and he's like, what the heck's going on? Yeah. I normally end up alone somewhere, so it's fine. <laughs> it's a time when I actually can do some work, so that's even uh -huh. more. So where's F? OK, well, let's not use that button. How do you do? I've got a new keyboard. Uh, function lock. That's what I want. F11. There we go. Um, OK. We have, well, there's some that are not ambiguous at all. Number five, this is the only event where stakeholders are regularly invited to participate. Everybody's on the same page for that one for sure. Let me grab a, a big tick. I agree with everybody on that one. Uh, during the sprint review, the product owner may share budgetary and likely release dates. I'm going to put another big tick. Oh, I'll grab the big tick because then it's already the right size. There we go. 
I'm gonna put another big tick on that one. We 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 want to we'd like to use the sprint review as one of the primary communication mechanisms where we've got everybody together. Right? So it's open, it's transparent, the stakeholders are there, the team is there, and um, perhaps leadership is there. Um, the product owner is there and we can communicate things in an open and transparent manner um, and it allows us to maybe have or not have or deal with some of those things that come up when somebody else thinks their stuff is more important than everybody else's stuff maybe they can openly and transparently say so and why and then find out they're wrong because everybody else has other ideas right that's kind of kind of the value in that uh, in this event, stakeholders and scr the Scrum team collaborate on the next things uh, that could be done to optimize value. That's another uh, green hick there. Um, we want to, what's next, right? Something might have changed, so we need to figure that out. Uh, then we get number three. I'm not doing them in any particular order. I guess numerical order might have made more sense, but that's not the way I started. Number three, during the sprint review, the product owner may present a forecast of progress towards the product goals, right? Um, product goals are uh, pretty important in Scrum. They help us focus the product backlog, um, gives gives us, oh, what's the best way to describe a product goal? So we're going to have some kind of vision or strategic goal for our product. And then that might be too nebulous, too far out for the people doing the work to actually connect to that idea. So a product goal is an intermediary strategic goal that is far enough out that it's a bunch of sprints, but close enough that we as people doing the work can actually see how the work we're doing contributes towards that thing. Because sometimes the vision is, you know, some solve some esoteric customer problem um, and it's difficult to see how we get there because that's two years away. Um, so how do we get something a little bit closer to connect to? Uh, number one, the purpose of the sprint review is to assess if the product increment should be released to market. I, I would say yes, it is. If your stakeholders are sitting there saying we can get value from what is what you have done so far, why would you leave it sitting on a shelf? Why wouldn't you ship it to customers? Now, you might not ship it to customers if the cost to ship to customers is too high, right? But then I would want to have a conversation about why is the cost to ship to customers so high? Right? How can we fix that problem? But shouldn't if, each increment go to the... It, you, it, it should be released regardless. It shouldn't it's, be part of it shouldn't be part of the review to assess if it can be shipped. Ah, so I think it's saying if it should be shipped. So if we have a potentially releasable increment at the end of the sprint, we get together at the sprint review and one of the outcomes might be push the red button to actually release it. It actually goes to production. Um Scrum, the Scrum guide doesn't require or enforce in any way that you do ship to production at the end of every sprint. Um, it just requires that you have a potentially shippable increment, a usable increment. Um, I would add to the Scrum Guide and say, yes, you should be shipping to production at the end of every sprint. And if you can't ship to production, I'd want to figure out why and how do we fix those things. Uh, just that statement just had two negatives and didn't catch both of them. The assess and should, because I thought assess if, yeah, I missed the should instead of. Yep, that's probably my bad English, Ove. I know Dick, Ove's Norwegian, so he obviously has better English than the rest of us for sure. No, I'm just, uh, the two negatives that, caught me off yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's my experience of being in Norway as I say stuff and people are like, yeah, that's wrong. Yeah. Because I'm, uh, I'm Scottish. Yeah. We don't speak English in Scotland, do we, Peter? No, no. No, I just, uh, yeah, it, I'm just saying the two negatives in that statement caught me off guard. Yeah, one of I the just, I, I missed the should, the assess and should. 
release to production. OK. Uh, what have we got left? Number two. Um, By the way, that's the reason why I'm the red dot. OK, that, that's OK. You did not. You were not required to own up to that. Uh, um, Station two, this is a four hour time box event for a one month sprint. That that is what the scrum guide says. Up you have up to four hours for a sprint review. Right? And it's usually it's proportionally less for shorter sprints. So if you're doing a two week sprint, you kind of have up to two hours. I would suggest that if you're not having enough conversations to fill that time, that for me would indicate a smell. I'm not going to say it's wrong, right? If you do a 15 minute sprint review and everything is awesome, you're building the right thing, your stakeholders are happy, they understand what's going on, your team knows where you're going, um, and you can do that in 15 minutes, awesome, right? But in general, I would see it as a smell if you're not able to fill that time or at least fill a good proportion of that time. It would mean to me that we're maybe not getting to the crux of the conversation. We're not communicating enough. Maybe we're not getting enough feedback from our stakeholders. We're not engaging with our stakeholders um, for them to provide feedback. Because I don't know if you've noticed Right. But if you have a, a, a meeting, whether it's Teams or Zoom or any platform and you ask a question and there's 20 people there. You'll generally have tumbleweeds. You won't have anybody saying anything. If you do have people saying something, it will be the loud people who always talk. Or the hippo. Right. You heard that expression the the highest hippo, highest paid individual in the room that's the hippo right so either either people don't feel like they can talk they don't feel like it's a forum within which they can voice their opinions or they don't really feel invited they feel like it's a platitude right so there's a couple of techniques you can use in there what one is um i and i can't remember the 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 name of the technique but it's you make sure you get an affirmative or a negative from everybody in the room. Everybody has to say either yes or no, and we take them not saying anything as they totally disagree with what we say. So are you happy with this product? I want to hear a yes from everybody. That can be a technique you can use to get to get to that person that's going to say, well, no, this is this is a problem. Right, but maybe they didn't want to say anything and to encourage them to talk. The other way is do breakout rooms, do smaller exercises, leverage those liberating structures. I'll, I'll talk about some of the options uh, that I have seen work. Um, I would also say that everything I say is what I've seen work in the contexts within which I've been working. Um, so Peter, may have things that work for him but don't work for me. Ov may have things that work for him uh, uh, and don't work for me. And it's culture specific as well. Uh, the Brits can be fairly loud and obnoxious in meetings. Uh, the Norwegians can be fairly reserved and uh, 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 not boisterous at all. Right. So you need to take that into account. Who is attending your meeting and what is their culture even within different companies? Uh, and then the last one, number four. I don't know why I ordered them in that weird way, but there we go. Uh, the sprint review has the highest number of participate participants making it an expensive event. OK, so this time all of these statements are in fact true. Um, the sprint review is usually your most expensive event. Right, you've got two hours. You've got the scrum team. So the product owner, the developers and the scrum master and a whole bunch of stakeholders, business people, people who care about your product. The most people at any point in time are in that event. Therefore, it's by definition, it's the most expensive event you have. So you want it to be valuable. Right? If you're wasting people's time, you'll find that participation will decrease 
over time because people will stop coming back. If you don't show people anything they care about, they're not going to come back next time. Right? Even if you don't show them anything they care about, if they're not engaged and don't see anything they care about, they're definitely not coming back. So we need to figure out how do we encourage people to participate um, in that in that event. Does that, does that sound reasonable for are my answers reasonable? Then you want to disagree with anything? Oh, I got a little heart pop up there. That's pretty good. Using the tools. <laughs> using the tools. Um to do that. Um, OK, so well, let's look at what a sprint review might look like. OK, so I've got a, a, a couple of pieces uh, that I want to, to, to talk about here, and then I've got um, some little exercises around it. So the, the first piece to think about is what, what's the purpose of the sprint review in Scrum. Peter, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what 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 do you think the purpose of the review is? Feedback. Feedback. Right. It's it's part of our empirical process control system, which Scrum is trying to implement. And empiricism just means feedback. It means look at what happened and figure out what to do differently next to make what happened better the next time around. Right, that th those empirical uh, uh, feedback loops, inspect and adapt, all different ways of saying the same thing. So the sprint reviews outcome should be an understanding of what we are doing next. And in Scrum, we store that information in an artifact to provide transparency called the product backlog, right? That's where we're transparently reflecting what are we going to go do next? What's the next most important thing to do? What's coming up after that, right? That's where we're reflecting that. So we need to walk out of the sprint review with an updated uh, uh, product backlog. Uh, yeah, I can put a uh, of, could you put the link for the mural in the in the chat? Just copy it from where you saw it before. And you have one more question in the Teams chat as well. Oh, I haven't had that. So it's, can you share the link? What happens? So Carlos is asking, what happens when the product owner is absent in the sprint review? Could you share your opinion on that, please? That is a very good question. I am going to share it with a, a little story. I worked with a with an organization in uh, uh, Horton, in uh, which is about I don't know, it's about two hours south of Oslo. I think it is two hours south of one Oslo. One hour, two hours with train, one hour with car. Yeah, I always went on the train, so it was two hours. Um, and and I had I worked with this team, and they were they were very. I'm actually going to I'm going to say depressed, right? They were not a happy team. Um, they had a very negative outlook on the work they were doing and what they were doing. And I was trying to figure out what the problem was, right? So I, I go to the, sprint, the, the, the events and, and see what's going on. And at the sprint review, I, I just asked them. I didn't see anybody new. So I was like, who's the product owner? Oh, oh, that's 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 Thor. Right, he's he's not here. I'm like, does, does is he usually here? No, no, no. He doesn't normally come to the sprint reviews. How how would you feel as a team if your product owner thought so little of the work that you were doing that they couldn't even be bothered to come and see what it was you did and how well it was done? How would that make you feel? Probably make you feel like nobody values your work. Right? What are the what are the three uh, things that we need 
to feel like we're we can work well it's from uh, drive dan pink's book drive do you remember what the three things were it was autonomy mastery and purpose were the three intrinsic motivations once you get money off the table when we're not worried about putting a roof over our head autonomy mastery and purpose we want to feel like we're in control of the work we do right so Scrum facilitates that with our self-organizing teams selecting the work at sprint planning. We want to feel like we're good at our job, right? That we're learning more things, mastery of our profession, right? And that manifests both in professional Scrum, right? We're doing that part well, but also engineering excellence. If you're a software team, you know, are we doing DevOps practices, are we getting value from our product? Are we continually shipping it to production? Are we always increasing quality? Are we learning from each other? That's that mastery. And then purpose. Are we building stuff that matters? Do we feel like the stuff we build matters to other people? Because otherwise, why do I get out of bed in the morning? If what I do doesn't matter, OK, well, I won't do it then and we'll have the same outcome. So how do you create that purpose for people? And the product owner turning up to the sprint review is probably one of the first steps, right? If you can't get the product owner in, you probably can't get the stakeholders in either. And, and isn't he supposed to get them in, at least on the... That's one of his jobs as well, to get them together yeah. with him to showcase what's happening. and. Part, part of the problem I found for this team was that the product owner also wasn't doing the product backlog. Therefore, the team was building stuff that the product owner didn't care about because the product owner didn't care what they were working on enough to go update the product backlog and tell them what to work on. Right, So it was one of those vicious cycles of spiraling down to, to mediocrity. And the question is, what was he actually doing to have the title product owner? Sounds like he was not doing wasn't doing anything. So, so, um, th but this is where we get to that difference between: Do I have the job title of product owner, or am I fulfilling the accountabilities of being a product owner? And I don't really care about the job title part. You can be called a delivery manager. You can be called. Uh, a product manager, you can be called a, a project manager, right? I don't care what your job title is, uh, but somebody needs to take the accountabilities of the product owner, um, which is making sure that there's a, a clear, transparent product backlog that reflects transparency of the future, that um, everybody on the team and the stakeholders understand uh, what those things are and then actively managing that going forward into the future. So um, if those things aren't happening, that, that's where I would look who's supposed to be doing that. Um, so there's another question in the chat there. How do you get outcomes from the user? Uh, could you recommend some tips? And I, I'm not sure I understand outcomes uh, from, from, from the user, so maybe Need to explain that a little bit better, but I think I might answer that question as we go through. OK, how do we get feedback from the user? Maybe. Um, or maybe it could also be that you're asking, how do we know what the outcome is supposed to be rather than just being given solutions, which quite often users try and give us solutions. Um, so I'm not sure what you mean there, uh, Carlos. Uh, Andre is asking a, an interesting question as well. Uh, but can the Scrum Master be asked to back up the product owner in their absence, right? And I would ask the question, if a product owner is doing their job, right, they are taking those accountabilities, then they should be knowing what's happening in the marketplace, what's happening inside of the business, uh, they have relationships and manage relationships with stakeholders, whether difficult stakeholders, negative stakeholders. They still need to manage those relationships. Um, and they take all of that information of what the team wants to do, 
what the technical realities of the product is, what the uh, business needs are, what the commercial realities are, and they funnel all of that information into here's what we're going to do next. I'm not sure that I have often seen Scrum Masters that have the knowledge and skills to do that. Right, so it's, it's, it's a kind of different set of experiences. Uh, I'm not saying it can't happen, right? But I would probably prefer a business analyst to be back up for the PO because they're going to have a better understanding of what the business needs than the Scrum Master might have. Or maybe the Scrum Master is your business analyst, in which case maybe yes, right? There's no real rule around that. Um, Ah, so Carlos is asking, how do we measure the outcomes? Um, let me kind of let me put a pin in that, and you ask that in a in a in a in a little bit, okay? Because um, I think we might get to that. Um, so what what do you think we need going into a sprint review? What's what's I, I mentioned a couple of things as part of this funnel, right? What what are the things that the product owner needs to bring into that story in order to be able to review, discover, and rearrange the product backlog um, to reflect transparency of the future. What should we what should we have on here? You have the sprint goal from the last sprint. So that's what you should be measuring yourself against. Sprint goal, because maybe we're measuring our yeah, we are likely measuring ourselves against did we achieve the thing that we committed to. Yeah. What what else is uh, important in this? Product strategy, giving us the direction where we want to go so we can align. Product strategy. Yeah, absolutely. What What's our overall strategy? I would suggest that might be uh, of the product vision and maybe the current product goal, right? But maybe there's more information there, so I'm happy to put all of those things on the on the list. They're, they're probably useful information. What 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 else? Remember, your your product owner is spending the money. They're deciding what we're going to go work on. So what what do we need to discuss in order to try and be as right as possible at this point in time in what we're building next? So, so the value of the product backlog items. Yeah, the value contained within the product backlog. What about we we just did this two weeks ago? Let's say we're doing two week sprints, right? We just we're doing two week sprints. Two weeks ago, um, what's changed in the last two weeks? We've discovered more. Okay, so Carlos Car wants you to inspect the outcome in the chat. Yeah. So the 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 I, I'm. What is the outcome? What's the result of all of our work? The increment. Yeah, we need to inspect the increment. The product has changed in the last two weeks. Maybe that means some of the stuff that's on our backlog we don't need. Maybe that means that there's other stuff we do need because of whatever we built. Right, but there's also. Changes in the business. Right. What's happened in the business in the last two weeks is their needs and desires exactly the same as they were two weeks ago. Wouldn't, isn't that part of just having the backlog always ordered according to what's required or what's the changing in tide in the business? So th this is the moment where we we have all of those stakeholders 
as well as the team together. As a, so you mean more re reordering the backlog based on what has changed, not because yeah. the, if there's a change for it, because otherwise I would expect that to be always present in an yes. ordered backlog. So maybe there's a change that the product owner knows about, but maybe there's a change that they don't. Yeah. What's happened in the business, right? And then perhaps market changes. If you're building a commercial product, what's what have competitors been doing? Right? Maybe that's going to impact what our how our priorities have changed. Right? What do you think happened in the sprint first sprint review at the Microsoft Teams teams when uh, lockdown happened? <laughs> right? We 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 need the world's changed. We need to throw out this backlog and what do we need now? What's the most important thing we can do to help solve our users' problems now, which might be completely different from two weeks ago? Right? I would argue that is a massive change that you don't want to wait for the sprint review sure. to adjust for. I, I, I would definitely agree. Probably uh, it requires a special session and <laughs> something bigger happens. Yeah. That, I, I used a massive example, which definitely I would agree or would probably have some special things happening. Um, but what's happening in the market, what competitors are releasing, maybe they've released a, a feature that means that users are starting to gravitate towards your competitors rather than your product. How do you get ahead of that, uh, uh, headed off and do that? So we're going to take all of that information, present it in some way and bring it into everybody's consciousness, their frontal lobe, so we can noodle on it and have discussions about it. So we don't just need stakeholders, but we need the right stakeholders for the conversations that we need to have. So you're right of the product owner probably needs to have some understanding of what do I want to discuss walking into the sprint review so I can invite some of the right stakeholders. Right. Some stakeholders are going to come every sprint because you're building stuff they care about, so they want to provide you with feedback. So stakeholders is kind of a catch-all word that they use in Scrum, which just means anybody who cares about the outcomes that the team's working on. Right. So they could be users, could be business people, could be purchasers, could be could be anybody. No, unlock all. So I have a little flow. Ah, uh, Carlos is asking who who should present the sprint review. That's a good question, and I'm going to going to be answering that almost almost right now. Because what I have Thank here, let me. That was going to be my next thing. I'm going to unlock this and just move it out the way because I want to I want to use it. So the first thing that we probably want to do during a sprint review is level set everybody. This was I think it was Anna came right out and said, um, you know, what what's the product strategy? Is the product strategy the same as it was two weeks ago? Maybe it is, but maybe we just need to reaffirm it. Maybe the people that are there don't remember it. So let's reaffirm what's the current vision and goal of the product. Right? And maybe we just show that. Right? But who 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 owns that vision, product, goal, strategy? Product owner. Product owner owns that. So who's best placed to have that conversation? Product owner. Product owner is like the, I don't know, you could use an analogy of a ringmaster of the 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 event, right? Um, they're the host who's for them, they own the product backlog, and the purpose of the event is to update the product backlog. Therefore, it's in their best interest that it's successful. Um, Saeed's asking who is allowed to be at scrum meetings? Uh, anybody who you think has got input, valuable input, should be there. 
So the product owner, the scrum master and the developers are always there. And then there's the stakeholders, which is can be anybody. It can be senior leadership. It can be actual users of your product. It can be anybody. I worked with a company in the UK uh, and they ended up having to, they, they had one of those uh, um, like all hands meeting rooms in their company headquarters and they would fill that for a sprint review. They'd be hard pushed to fit the hundred people that turned up to see their sprint reviews, right? But it took them months of what do you really want? And once you start building things that people want, they'll want to come and provide you feedback. Right? They don't want to provide you feedback on stuff they don't care about. So maybe you share the goal. And then does everybody remember what the sprint goal was last sprint? Perhaps not. So we need to share that as well. And again, that would be the product owner sharing that. Right. And then maybe in some way we want to demonstrate the working software. Who's best place to demonstrate the working software? The team, wouldn't it? They're the ones who just built it. They should be able to explain to the stakeholders what it is they've done and why it matters to the stakeholders. We're building value after all, not features. Right? Nobody really cares about user stories and features. They care about value. What do I get from what you've just added? Tell some stories, right? That's the way I, 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 I storytelling is the best way to do that. Um, so there's a number of techniques that I've seen work really well uh, in demonstrating the software. Um, sh depending on how many, if you've just got one team, right, doing a doing a, a presentation, maybe they just present. Here's what we changed, right? If you've got ten teams, that might take too much time. So uh, maybe you need something that looks more like. Uh, have you seen in those American movies when the, the 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 kids have their science fair at the school, and you've got a bunch of stations each presenting a different thing, uh, and people go to the things they care about. That's the science fair model, um, and that can be implemented virtually as well with breakout rooms and there's various techniques for that. Um, but doing that might be good. Uh, doing some kind of shift and share if you've got a lot of stakeholders. Uh, shift and share is when you send people out to breakout rooms uh, and each breakout room is a particular feature or part of the product that one of the teams has been working on. And then you have the attendees move to the next room, the next room, the next room uh, in order to, to facilitate that. I've, I've done that one in Teams um, and it, it, it works in Zoom as well. But how many teams should a sprint review have? Shouldn't it be per team kind or? Sprint review per product. Per so if you have 10 teams working on one product, you show one unified working increment to the stakeholders. Because you've only got one product. So we're doing a review of the increment and we have one increment. We don't. 10 teams working on the same product don't create 10 different increments because then that's not integrated together. Therefore, it wouldn't meet a definition of done. In that sense. But... So what, what a lot of teams do or what a lot of uh, product management does is um, they they create some kind of alignment in their product to minimize the number of people that are part of each of these stories, right? So if you look at the way uh, and the example, I always I always use examples from the Azure DevOps team because um, I, I, I I've been working with them for a long time, uh, but they over the part of the eight years of their transition towards agility was they shifted their product from one big ball of string. Right. To almost like verticals of here's uh, uh, and it's now called Azure boards, right? The graphical representation of the work that you're doing. So there's one product owner for one product. 
And then that product owner maybe has two or three teams working for them. And those two or three teams are contributing to that single unified product. So you have one backlog, one product owner, one, maybe one sprint planning or a, like a pre-planning and one sprint review. Yeah, but are you, would you do one sprint review for all five products in that? Or if, I have, are you... if I had five products, different products, I would maybe have five different reviews. Yes. Yeah, but your the Azure DevOps is now becoming a, then a mixed sample or mixed yeah. example because now there are five different product, five right. different products, which each of so, them. So at the small scale, right, there is only one right answer. One product, one product backlog, one product owner, right? But once you scale up to larger interconnected systems, maybe some of those systems are their own product that can be shipped on their own. But I would suggest if it ships together, it needs to be reviewed together. Right, so if you have a product where you're breaking it up by component rather than by vertical value streams, then you probably need, you're probably forced into the larger review where you've got one bigger product. Um, now, when you do have a much larger review, something the Azure DevOps team did do um, was prior to their sprint review, every team would create a video to present the demo of what it was they created and send that out to everybody. So, so, then, it's, been, so it's, been, it's been my experience for, for big for big projects or for big programs to do one one um, demo for the whole project product, however you want to describe it. Um, and at one level, you could say, well, I was looking after data migration. Did I really care that much about the user experience at the other end of the, the data flow? But it was still useful to hear someone say, what we want to see next sprint is we want to see the um, events. So then, then, then that would actually inform me why people were then chasing me to migrate events from the database through the entire value chain. So even though I normally didn't care, it actually provided me and my team with some useful some some useful feedback. Um, yeah. And I'd, there were probably occasions where we can't load this data whatever x y and z data so we're not going to be able to display it in the ux for another couple of weeks so that would that inform the guys at the end of the flow well let's not plan any work around trying to get that data in because the migration team aren't going to get it to us for a few sprints so it, it's it is it is useful for everyone to hear at least five or ten minutes what everyone else is trying to achieve yeah but the, the other teams are also stakeholders to your input or output. Maybe some of those teams are providing output that is your input, right? And maybe you're providing output that is their input. They, they're they blocked from delivering some features until you've got something there for them, right? So it, it, it's that whole context uh, that is important in the demonstration. Um, so I do agree, of that there are scale issues and you have to figure out what practices work. Uh, the Nexus framework, which is Scrum.org's scaling framework, um, encourages having a, a, a single sprint review, but it does uh, 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 talk about it being for up to nine to ten teams working together. If you get more than that, you probably want to split into, I, I think they have a, a, I can't remember what the phrase is, but it's Nexus of Nexus. Right, you might have multiple next eye uh, 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 that roll up to a single product. It's just more complicated. Uh, and the example that I think sits well with with what you're talking about, Ov, is I, I think about the office team. Right, the office team sh SharePoint is not really that dependent upon Word, but Word exists also as a, a separate app, but also inside of SharePoint. So maybe there are is a lot of crossover. Um, but they've got nine nine hundred people ish working on that product um so how, how might they organize that to be to get the information to the people that need it the feedback from the people that need to provide that feedback um it's figuring out what works at scale 
there are no hard rules at scale. There's so many different options there. Yeah, I'm just seeing some. You said it was up to four hours. Yeah, I know it's just a number, but up to four hours for a one month sprint, and you yep. should be able to fill it. But then, if you are then three teams, are you at twelve hours then? No, it's still <laughs> it's still one sprint. So what oh. what I've seen work, and actually, I, I, uh, what one of the teams that, that that Peter was working with, um, they they had a a time, a time box inside of the sprint maybe each day i think there was six teams and maybe each team gets seven minutes to show their stuff or maybe it was only five minutes to show their stuff uh I, I, so you, you're definitely bringing it down a little bit but what i found valuable was once they got into a cadence of having those discussions about how do we fit all six teams inside of this sprint review they started talking about telling a story rather than just showing here's I added this feature to the product. OK, but why did we add that feature? How does that fit into the story of what these six teams are trying to build? Um, and that started to then add more context um, so that it was even more targeted feedback on well, we've built this part of the story. Maybe we need to focus on this part of the story next because then we can have a holistic view of what's going on. It's generally to elicit conversations. The more conversations you have, hopefully, uh, uh, the the better the outcomes. Uh, but that was demonstrating. Yes. Just to say, if you if you are time boxed, then you can always say at the end, now we covered off A, B, and C. If you want more information, you know where to find us. Yeah, so if someone is particularly interested in, I don't know, you know, some example, then you should always have that as an open invitation. Did you find that that happened a lot? Uh, for, yeah, yeah, but we're all on the same floor in one big building, so it wasn't difficult. People would actually would actually come and get you immediately afterwards if you'd said something that their, their ears pricked up on. They wouldn't they wouldn't dive deep into it then and there because it's taking it be very expensive. But they would come and see you afterwards and say you were saying you weren't going to shift this this information. We actually only want a tiny amount. Could you actually prioritise that? That's the sort of thing that people would say uh, after that event. And yeah, maybe even three or four Scrum Masters get together and try and work out exactly what we could deliver in terms of, you know, to the overall to overall product. If someone wanted something specific for some very you know, high value reason. Yep. So that, that, that gets to that collecting feedback. How are we going to collect feedback from people, especially when we're in the virtual space? Because most of us are operating almost 100% in that virtual world. And it's even more difficult uh, to get feedback from people. You can't just look at the person who you know has some feedback mm -hmm. or uh, see it as easily on their face if they don't have their cameras on. Um, so the, the, the two types of exercises that I've done with teams uh, is one to four alls, right? So have them build lists. One to four alls is about building lists, and it's one minute on their own, creating a list. Two minute in pairs, four minute in fours, and they merge those lists and then bring it back to the whole room. So what are the ideas for what's next? Um, there's also another exercise which is made up of three parts uh, that I have used called a what, so what, now what. Right, and that's quite an effective way uh, um, to to figure out what's next. So I've got both of those added to the to the to the mural as suggestions to go research and look at uh, and see if it will uh, do it. Both of them are part of uh, Liberating Structures, uh, so you can go to the Liberating Structures website uh, and see that there. Um, but uh, uh, what so what now what? I've had some really good experiences with it, not just. Um, in sprint reviews, but in other other uh, areas as well. It's quite a useful technique. Oh, so collecting feedback. Um, and it's again, it's the the team and the product owner who are kind of hosting hosting that. And then maybe we need to review the business changes. Right? Maybe this is where uh, uh, not only do we have the 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 product owner and the team providing input, but we've now got to bring the stakeholders in as well. Oh well, they're providing from collecting feedback, but um, they're they're talking. 
they are bringing, you're saying to the stakeholders, what's changed in your part of the business that you think matters to what we're building? Has do, is what you need changed? Right, because if you build stuff that people don't need, they're not going to provide you with feedback. They're not going to care about what you're creating. What do those people need? Right, and what do they need next? What's the most valuable thing uh, we can do for them? And, and a what, so what, now what can definitely work in that space as well. Um, and maybe those two activities you might roll into one, collecting feedback and business changes and having those discussions. Um, but I just wanted to be clear that we need to make sure we cover both of those topics. And then we need to actually review and update the product backlog. So I, I would potentially crack open the product backlog, show everybody what's at the top of the product backlog and are these still things we need, right? Some of them might be technical needs because the team needs to do them in order for other things to happen, but we can have those conversations. I don't want a stakeholder uh, uh, going home fuming. Why am I not getting the thing I want? I thought it was more important than this other thing. But actually, this other thing is a prerequisite of the thing they want. If they don't understand that, they're going to be pissed. Right, because they're not getting their thing. Yeah, but I, I normally publish the draft um, sprint backlog for the next sprint. Yep. And maybe even do it prior to the meeting so it's actually circulated in advance. Uh, that way people can turn up with a pre-prepared opinion. That That is definitely a good way to to prepare people if you have that information. Have a have a have a draft of the the the, the goal. What do you think? What does your product owner think the goal is going to be for the next sprint? What are the things that they think in collaboration with the team are going to be part of that story? Because they, they should have had those conversations during refinement. Right. Oh, yes, so Carlos, the one, two, four all is you, you have one minute for people to write stuff down on their own, two minutes in pairs, um, and then you join two of the pairs together and they get four minutes uh, in, in effectively two pairs uh, and then bring it back to the whole room. And it's a way to get even the most introverted people part of the conversation and contributing to the to the story definitely gets people out of their 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 shell. You can find it on the Liberating Structures website, um, but I, I run that. I use that judiciously in the in the live virtual classroom space for sure. It's a really good way to to, to break that up and stop people feeling like meetings and events suck because it's just, you know, broadcast. So collaborating on what to do next. Um, and then the last thing I've got is perhaps reviewing timelines and budgets for the next release right we're spending the customer's money we're spending the business's money they kind of want to know how, how 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 are we spending it and i would rather do that in an open and transparent public space with all of the stakeholders that care about that stuff than the product owner having 10 private conversations with a group of people having to justify themselves 10 different times, maybe in 10 different ways. Right? Don't let your product owner be browbeat, browbeaten, I think is the expression, by the stakeholders because they get them alone in a room. Right? Have these discussions open and transparent. Let, let the stakeholders browbeat each other rather than the product owner. That's the way I look at it. And at the end of the event, we've updated the product backlog. We physically updated it. We've made changes to it. We've changed the order. We've added new things. We've deleted things. To me, that sounds like quite a lot to happen in two hours. Sounds like I might struggle for time. Right, so maybe we can't cover everything every sprint review, but what's the important things to cover? especially if you've got big teams off. Right. So in 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 uh, uh, and that science fair model works really well where people just see the ones they care about. Uh, there's a question.
Yeah. So somebody's asking what what happens if I don't get everything done for a piece of value? And I, I would say that piece of value is not done. And if you show stakeholders something that is half finished or even 90% finished, they're they're not not going to be happy. And if you try and claim that it's finished, like show them something as if it's finished, that's not really morally or ethically sound, right? We're basically saying, we finished this. Shh, don't tell them we haven't finished those four things that need to be done and we'll do them tomorrow because they might get forgotten or the the world might have changed tomorrow and we need to do something different, right? And that thing never gets done. Don't get caught lying to your stakeholders. Open and transparent is kind of the key there. Uh, so I want to, uh, I'm going to skip this uh, little exercise I have at the bottom. I just kind of threw it on because I didn't know how long this, uh, uh, the sprint review one would take. But um, that's really the, 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 the whole sprint review. That's it. That's the whole thing. Now, you may have additional things. I know that um, when I worked with uh, some teams that Peter was working with, um, they also had like an architectural review that happened at the end of the sprint review. Like, we're going to tack this on because there are people at the customer that care about our technical decisions that we made, right? That they are invested in it because we're going to build a product and then we're going to hand it to them and they've got to support it. So they're like, we want to know how you built that thing so that we can better support it. Cool. Just don't do that at the start of the sprint review when the rest of the stakeholders who are business focused don't care about that stuff. Do it at the end. That's OK. But again, do it open and transparent. Try not have another meeting, right? Because if you push it off to another meeting, there's other time that's taken away from your team. Uh, Carlos is just asking about the, the, the budget. Um, the money that we're spending, right? Every sprint costs money. We're we're using people's time, so we're costing money. So so what are we going to to work on over the next few sprints? Do we have budget for two sprints, five sprints, ten sprints? Um, do we need to go looking for additional budget? Um, yeah, and I, for me, that all sits within the scope of the product owner. Um, the product owner is accountable for value delivery. Uh, they're getting money from the business and then spending it in some way. Um, so it depends on your context, right? If you're more in the professional services context, some of those things might be blurred a little bit um, on who owns what. And maybe you've got some kind of account manager as well, right? If you're building software, I'm thinking from an accountabilities rather than a job titles perspective. Uh, you might have somebody that is an account manager who has to do the invoicing at the end of every sprint because you're invoicing an external customer uh, that has to tot up the time and make sure that you're in budget and you know what are our projections because you've got internal reporting you have to do for your professional services organization um that might be called a project manager right it's entirely possible um and they might also have accountabilities outside of that account management um, they might be a, uh, they might be the product owner, or they might be a scrum master, or they might be a developer on a team. Um, that's my, my 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 preference is to actually provide a dashboard that anyone that everyone and anyone can look at that says, you know, this this is, um, you know, how many features we've got to get through. You know, this is this is our current burn up rate. You know, and this is our current predicted end end date for the current product backlog because that way it engenders the debate i mean if you're not going to finish on time then i'd start the debate early about what's not going to get done or extending out the timelines because what you don't want to do is get you know one sprint to go and go we've got six minutes more work to do because then everyone yeah. looks like a fool yeah we can be we can be open and you know at the end of sprint one right based on our progress this sprint this is what the rest of our time looks like don't we, we we've only got one sprint's worth of data so it may change drastically as we get better at delivering in this product as we build up more of the infrastructure and get faster at delivering features uh, but we can start having those conversations 
Yeah, look, and all, always bring real data, right? Have 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 data to look at on what's going what's going on with the product, how we're delivering, um, what our throughput is. Our I use cycle time scatter plots and and those kind of things with teams. Um, definitely, definitely a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't do a deep dive at the sprint review, but I would probably just have a graph and you know a couple of a couple of bullet points that says happy days guys we're all ahead of schedule or um you know we've had some great feedback from the last two or three sprint reviews but our backlog has now grown considerably you know we will not get to all of this and then i wouldn't you know go into the details but at least make everyone aware that that's what your current broad brush position is yep i agree but you also need to have a different discussion whether or not you're a project or a product, right? If you're a product organization, normally you just iterate and push yep. forward versus if you're a project where you have a finite date, then those kind of things are more important. So it's also yeah, context wise whether or not you're. In my opinion, at least. Well, even, even with product based organizations, you know, unless you're in an absolutely unique position, you're always going to have competitors, you're going to have some business drivers that will be setting dates, even if you know after you've got to that particular release, the next release is three months away, whatever the thing happens to be. You still care. You still care about money. You still care about time. You still care about yeah. features. Yeah, but it's more your. You might be reporting on two different things, whether or not you're this is part of this release or next release versus mm -hmm. now I'm out of money. <laughs> right. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if you've got if you've got a, co a constant number of um, a constant team size, then yeah, you talk. You want to, the debate is about when are you going to release a feature. Where um, if you're more of a software house, then it's more going to be about when are you going to get it get to get to the end of this product project to deliver a product typically to your customer. I, I, I yeah, I, I agree. I'm just going to a answer a question that, that Saeed had in the chat, which I think is uh, very interesting. Saeed's asking, can you tell me about the types of reports that a scrum master should deliver to management? Um, and I, I don't believe a scrum master is accountable for any reports. To management, the Scrum Master accountabilities are 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 generally to the team, ostensibly to the product owner, um, and accountable for the effectiveness of the team to management. Um, so the 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 flow of value, right? In Scrum, who is accountable for the for the delivery of value? So product owner. Product owner. So the, the person who should be uh, um, writing, delivering, managing, maintaining, owning any reports around uh, uh, budget and timelines, uh, around uh, flow of value and speed of delivery um, should be the product owner. They are, they're the ones who own that. Um, I'm not saying that they don't get help, right? Or that they don't delegate that to somebody else. That's entirely possible. Um, product owners can have minions too. Uh, but um, it's definitely not an accountability of within the accountabilities of the Scrum Master, right? It's within the accountabilities of the product owner. Um, but I know that often ends up in the accountabilities of the Scrum Master because the Scrum Master is treated like an agile project, project manager, right? Rather than uh, a Scrum Master. And maybe that's to do with multiple accountabilities, right? Um, so I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying uh, you need to watch out for that because it can cause negative behavior. We have we have about nine, 19 uh, minutes left and I'd really like to um, do the next exercise, but I'm going to have to be a bit of a bit of a time Nazi here um, <laughs> because uh, this, this 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 one I think uh, will be fun. So what I'd like to do it's a, a little exercise. It's called a TRITS, right? So I'm going to ask you a, a, a negative question. So let me summon everybody on the mural because we're going to use the, 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 the mural here. Um, so what I'd like you to do, and there's how many, how many, how many folks do we have? Let's see how many. Oh, it was, there's 10 of us. There's 10 of us. Okay. Uh, I'd like you to 
uh, silently and on your own generate a league list of things that you could do to destroy the sprint review what would make it not have the outcomes that we've been talking about right what could you do what have you seen done in your organizations or other organizations what's something that you're uh, like the one i mentioned the product owner not turning up right that's probably a big no-no I'm going to I'm going to put that one on the list. Uh, so let me I'm just going to. If I can figure out how to do it. Just silently and on your own, if you want to type in uh, something like notepad. If you do one item on each line when you paste it into mural it will become a bunch of post-its which is quite handy ah so if you oh well there's, I was going to say if if you're if you're on LinkedIn and you don't have any sound, then go to YouTube. It always works. I'm thinking of dropping the no. You're on mute, of so we can't. Uh, I opened Facebook after noticing that a little while ago, and it seems that there as well. So sound wise. Oh well, that could be because. So last time you had echo and now you have nothing. So <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I it, it looks like it's pumping out sound, but if there's no sound, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm the important people are the people that turned up. So I didn't want to break your flow on it. So <laughs> totally cool. And I can probably get the sound. I'm doing a Teams recording as well, so I can probably get the sound off that and yeah. do some kind of magic. So I'm going to open a, a, a breakout room and put you in pairs. So if anybody leaves, I'll be very unhappy because some well, other, somebody else will be unhappy as well because they're be in an empty room. Um, so I'm going to create five rooms. I will be going into a room as well. Oh, well, that's not going to work. Somebody left just at the last minute. Um, so let me fix that. Oh, OK, no, that works. I am good. So um, what I'd like you to do is in pairs, I want you to compare the lists you just made of, of these things that could destroy your sprint review and merge them together into one list. And then I'll join two pairs together. That will be a group of six as well um, and merge those lists again. OK, so then we end up with one list deduped uh, at the end when we bring it all back together. Uh, what, what I was going to say, actually. Um, I'm going to add an extra one, which is in, internal politics. Internal politics. Yeah. Sorry, I just uh, resize them all so that we can we can read them a little bit better. I don't know if that helped or hindered, but <laughs> bit small box now. So product owner not turning up, not getting feedback. People not engaging. Oh, there's two not providing feedback, so I'm going to delete one. Rushing, not allowing enough time. I, I see quite often teams putting 15 minutes for a sprint review on their calendar. Right, that's not enough time to do half of the things that we're talking about in here. If your sprint planning's 15 minutes and your retrospective is 15 minutes, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about um why we're not getting uh, uh, enough value uh, uh, for that uh criticism Rush celebrating of how people are doing it so uh, at least in my case we've noticed we, we had big big sprint reviews of 
60 people, seven teams. So you could see people that were giving time to focus on the high level, but they were going into so much detail that no matter how much time you would give them, it still would be rushed because they would just pack more details into it. Yeah, so um, ha having having a plan up front before going into sprint planning, um, knowing what you want your the teams to talk about, uh, what I mean, th th this is a a, a, a presentation on the, of the work that was done and the state of the product to the stakeholders. Um, so I would want to be actively working with the product owner before I walk into the sprint review and spending a little bit of time. What are we going to talk about? How are we going to approach it? What are we going to demo? What are we not going to demo? Because the stakeholders just don't care. Right. We might have had to build stuff to support other stuff that the stakeholders don't care about. Right. There's no point in presenting that at the sprint review. So how do we get down to these are the values, the value that we provided to stakeholders so that we can then iterate on the next piece of value. And, and, and I think that focus on value is sometimes lost. Any other um, highlights? Uh, maybe I want to uh, ask about something in here. I mean, like it's in my mind, it's uh, like plus and minus, plus and scars, uh, about the criticism. Uh, what do you think about it? Like, uh, is the criticism is uh, kind of feedback through, or is it just negative? So the there's constructive feedback yeah. that is negative about what it is we did. And then there's um was that Carlos or Andre Andre that was asking the question? Uh Andre. Andre. Um yeah. Andre, that 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 question sucks and I don't like the way you said it. Okay. That that's <laughs> not that's not constructive feedback. Okay. Right? Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so it, it's if you think of the Scrum values, we want to be openness, right, and courage to say that things are wrong, but respectful All in right. the way we say it. And it's it's not respectful to have some hippo in the room saying to the team that 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 you suck and everything you did sucks, and. Uh, yes. your product sucked it, you know that that's not going to create a positive response in anybody so so part of the the role of the scrum master is helping everybody interacting with the scrum team understand what interactions are helpful and what aren't as well so maybe the if, if that 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 person who's like that is is going to be participating. Maybe the Scrum Master needs to go maybe coach them and help them understand w how do we create positive interactions, not negative interactions. And you can be critical posit in a positive way. Right? And, and it's about the way we speak to people, the language we use, it, 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 it is really important. And it's culturally specific as well, right? So what what works in uh, when I'm when I'm when I'm teaching classes, what works in Saudi Arabia uh, doesn't work in the UK, doesn't work in Norway. Right. Uh, uh, the way people hear things is different. The way people um, react is different. So you, you need to bring some of that into it. And when you do have a multicultural team, think about those things. Um, it's specifically important for the Scrum Master, but the whole team needs to be involved in being as effective as possible. I would add to it that even, even if the criticism is constructive, but all you do on every sprint review is just focus on the negative, it really damages the team's morale. Um, in the past, we had quite an experience C-level management, and we always had this very vague um, um yeah feedback like oh yeah we don't like it but they didn't know why they didn't know the direction where we should move forward with that 
And what happened in the end, it's like we would release, let's say, seven different things that bring value to the customer. Um, it was in timely matter, manner. It was everything was correct, but they were ignored because everybody focused on this eight thing that was not fully up to the standards. And once you once you hear it every two weeks or every four weeks that everything you do is wrong and all the wins are being ignored or like not being acknowledged in the room, then yeah, it it changes the whole dynamic in the team as well. So I would say like the first yep. point of coaching in our company was to share the stakeholders. Okay, it's it's perfectly fine if you don't like something, but a as as you mentioned constructively. So tell us you know what you want us to do with it. And second, do acknowledge all the wins as well to to build up the the teams. Yep, and I I I would probably I would probably want to break the stakeholders up into smaller groups um, to talk about those things because quite often I and I found this a weird thing the introverts right don't want to speak when there's a large group of people. But the extroverts are quite happy being loud and obnoxious when there's a, a, a large group of people, but they're not as happy to to be like that when it's a small group of people, because I I I think I think, and this is just Martin thinks, I think psychologically, if you're an extrovert and there's a large group of people, you feel like you can say anything because you're anonymous because it's a large group of people and it doesn't matter. Right, but when it's a smaller group of people, it feels more intimate. Well, you're more so, likely to be challenged, though. I would suggest in a smaller group. In a smaller group, you're also more likely to be challenged in a small group of people. And yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think you're talking complete rubbish there, Martin. By the way. Okay. Thank you for that. It's <laughs> a nice small group. I think that in a very positive and constructive way, obviously. Yeah. Um. So. 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 Uh, uh, breaking people, breakout rooms are, I think, are really important in all of the, the the exercises that we do. But having structure around what you want people to do, um, we we just did the oh and Carlos, that's the one two four all. Um, that's the exercise we just did to generate a list of things. Um, and and I use this in meetings. I use this. When I'm, uh, uh, you know, somebody asks in the in the room, oh, you know, what should we do next, right? And that that's a very vague question. But if you ask, what could we do next, and you write, get people to do the one, two, four, all, write down stuff on your own, you'll generate a list of things like here's what's important next, um, and then maybe get people to vote on it, right? What's the the most important thing? Because you may not have thought of something that somebody else thought of. But it's actually more important than the things that you thought of. Do some kind of voting and then, you know, OK, maybe maybe this is the thing that we need to focus on now. Um, and it, it's um, really important to to get that collaborative environment right. And it, it can be difficult because when you've got big groups of people, um it can be it can be very difficult to do that and uh, what, what one of the 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 six teams uh one that i was working with with peter before um there was what 70 80 people in the in the sprint review i think it was something like that well with that with that with that team the the sort of business users gave positive feedback yes it was it was you know it was the technical people and you know, as we all know from experience, you know, no solution architect has ever been wrong on any subject whatsoever. And therefore, anybody else who's come to a different way of doing it is clearly an absolute imbecile and should be fired uh, if not taken outside and hung. And where business users are more inclined to say, well, I don't understand the technology, I don't really care about that. But what I want to talk about is value. And the the uh, the developers want to deliver value. And so that's that's an amicable conversation. It's well, I think your I think your application is too chatty, or why are you using that database, or you know why aren't you using that? Yeah, you know, that's that's the people that developers will die in a ditch over over that stuff. Having an yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and 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 I think we we need to maintain that focus on value, right? What what are we delivering that people care about? 
because nobody gives a crap about what technology the database was in, apart from a few pedantic people, like Peter is saying. Right? It doesn't, well, doesn't, help, could, it doesn't help the users to know that. Well, they, you could you could argue that it's critical for um, cost of ownership. I I don't I don't disagree with that. Right. Anyway, the, the, my point my point is you need to have a reasonable and amicable debate about about that based on what well, I think that. X is a crap database because it won't do Y, and you think it's a brilliant database. There's something else. What's the business value that X or Y brings to bear? That's that's where the debate should be, not your opinion versus my opinion. Clearly, I'm correct, but we can quickly move on now. <laughs> you are correct, Peter. That that's how you get those pedantic people to be quiet. You just agree with them. Um, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Peter. And me with you. I know. So <laughs> you, can, you can tell Peter and I have been in quite a lot of meetings together. So um, I, I, these are the these are the things to watch out for. Um, and even if it's small, like like uh, in Magda's uh, uh, version, if it if it even if it's just a little bit negative all the time, that can build up to that death of a thousand cuts for a team. Um, and end up in that spiral of negativity, um, trying to bring it down to what's the smallest thing we can deliver. If we feel like we're never meeting our sprint goals, we're probably taking on too much work, right? Or we've got the wrong sprint goals. Fix those things, create a virtuous cycle supporting the team uh, and what it is they're trying to do, uh, and hopefully we'll build more awesome stuff and less sucky stuff. That's uh what we'd like to see is there any 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 questions at this point otherwise i'm going to wrap because i am six minutes over i know luckily when i do these things at the end of the day most people don't care that i go a little bit over but Ove's my waiting for each other my dog cares your dog here <laughs> my, my dog up somewhere else doing doing something nefarious i'm sure you're eating into walkies time. Ah, there's a dog <laughs> sitting there looking at you with a lead in its mouth. Not quite, but anyway, yes. Um, well, if anybody does have any any questions, you if you've not seen it already, because you're here, obviously I'm running a weird community thing. I moved away from Microsoft Teams as a community because it sucks as a community. And, um, and over into it, it's called Mighty Networks, and it seems to be um, a lot easier to interact with, I think is probably uh, the phrase I would use. Um, so you're welcome to ask any questions there, ping me there or on LinkedIn or YouTube or wherever you feel like. OK. Um, Anybody have any? Yes. Uh, also uh, ask one more question uh, i'm curious about uh, no working software or no demo sometimes the screen may fail right? uh, so what's the dynamic what's the dynamic in there like uh, are we still need to uh, help the event the sprint if you are uh, skip it or have a conversation or what can uh, we can do about this yeah, so if, if 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 you end up in the position where you get to the end of the sprint and we don't have anything to show, right? I'm obviously not going to show stuff, but two weeks has still passed, right? Yeah. Time has still yeah. passed. We still, we still need to figure out what's the next most important thing, and it might be the same as the thing we didn't yet deliver, right? But having a conversation about why why were we unable to 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 deliver is it because the requirements weren't clear is it because the the some customer or stakeholder didn't provide data that they were meant to provide in a timely fashion um there could be a various things that we might want to deal with within the context of the stakeholders um but we also need to be a little bit courageous as a team uh to say you know we tried really hard this sprint and it wasn't good enough. Um, we weren't able to achieve a working version of the product that adds more value. Here's why. 
here's what we're going to try and do to fix it. And we're just about to go into our retrospective to deal with a little bit more of that. Um, I definitely think it's still worth it, right? It, I, I wouldn't be afraid to say everything went wrong. I would want the people you're saying everything went wrong to, to be respectful that we all did the best we could given our knowledge at the time and our skills and abilities, right? And hopefully we learn something during the sprint. What did we learn? We learned you can't do it that way or that technology doesn't actually work the way it's advertised to work or, uh, um, you know, uh, I don't know, Peter's not a good developer or whatever it was we learned uh, uh, during that sprint that resulted in, in our being unsuccessful is a learning opportunity as well. As I was going to say, they're much, better, they're much better off hearing that news directly from the team in the standard timescale yeah. than fine. You might say it's not going to be a two hour review. You might actually advertise it out as being a one hour review and give people back an hour of their life. Now, you might find that they're actually very supportive of you. And let's hope that's the way that it goes. And, you know, well, how it's going to impact us, et cetera. So it might actually be a valuable uh, experience because the team's actually going to feel the love from the from the stakeholders. So I, I would I'd always do it. And I, Peter, I, I would if, if I was a scrum master and in that position, I, I would maybe um, get in touch with all of the stakeholders before they arrived and say, look, I don't want you to be surprised by this. We had an incredibly bad sprint. Um, I, I, it would be really helpful if you could be uh, uh, supportive of the team and still collaborative in what we're going to do next to make things better. Um, I, I would maybe maybe knowing your stakeholders right <laughs> uh that might be something you want to do or it might be something you're not right. but do you want but should the there's two aspects or two comments here I, should the scrum master do that or a po it's a po who knows the stakeholders but you said yeah, the scrum yeah. master should contact sure the product owner should do that for sure yes but I, and I, you also you also mentioned about the retro because that's the most important part but should you in that case kind of perhaps do the retro before just to so that you you have some actionable light you said okay so this is yeah. what we're going to change and now we're going into the retro to figure out what we're going to change right so so yes right if the sprint was that much of a disaster hopefully we found out before the last day of the sprint mm -hmm. and we can start to have those conversations with the team because that's a, a particular thing that's disaster mode, right? Yeah. The retrospective is on a regular cadence so that we don't forget to inspect and adapt on our process. Um, but it doesn't mean you can't have a retrospective at other times because something happened. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Oh, both of those. Uh, uh, I, meant, I meant product owner when I said scrum, scrum master there. Um, and I also... Uh, Definitely don't wait for the retrospective if something needs to be dealt with. Uh, somebody just put something in the chat. Yeah, you say it's, it's okay when you do it on the same day. Yeah, it could be. And maybe you just roll, maybe you're reviewing retrospective, you're including the stakeholders a little bit in some of your retrospective. Um, and you, you can use that time that Peter was going to give back to, to, to maybe get the stakeholders involved in how do we solve that problem. Um, that could be, right? When you're in these circumstances, Scrum is designed to deal with the common cause. Uh, when there are exceptions, exceptional cause, um, deal with it in the best way that you think is going to end up with good results. That, that's what I tend to look at. OK. Well, um, I, I'm i going to have to go on that. So for anybody that hadn't noticed, um, the, the live stream had no audio. Um, so I'm going to try and do a post-production fix on that using the team's audio. Um, so we'll, we'll see. That's part of the fun, isn't it? Um, I had to rebuild. I had to reset my machine. My, my laptop does the streaming. And I had to reset my laptop last week, and I guess something's not right. But it's weird because it 
when I switch to a different uh, scene, it plays the music fine. It's just not getting the audio from Teams, even though the little bar is going up. So I'll need to figure out how to, how to do that. If only had, I had another techie in the house that could help out with that. You need the producer? Well, so sure. Uh, and, and yeah, that's definitely something that would be useful. So uh, the session in two weeks is uh, one that I have never done before. I'm going to have to build it between now and then. And it's introduction to agile leadership, um, because that seemed to be what a lot of people were asking for. Um, but I think the one after that, based on some of the things that have been asked uh, here, as well as uh, uh, on 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 the inter interwebs, uh, will probably be around data. Um, how do we measure measure the team, measure progress, measure? Uh, so not just the the Kanban measures, but like OKRs and uh, uh, those kind of things. How do we how do we measure progress? And I'll probably go into evidence based management stuff. OK. Cool. So uh, thank you very much for all of your uh, all of your time. And I'm going to go and figure out why there was no audio. On one scene. And thank right. you all. And I hope that was useful. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, Marty, for all. You're very well welcome, uh, Carlos and Andre, and Anna, Erica, Stephanie. Thank you for coming.